Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing the pressure enhancing solenoid from BD Diesel for the 2011 to 2018 6.7 Ford trucks. The BD Diesel 6R140 pressure enhancing solenoid. This is for the 2011 to 2018 Ford F250 to F550s that have got the 6R140 transmission in them. What does this do? This pressure enhancing solenoid goes in, inside of your transmission and what it's going to do is it's going to raise your line pressure. It's going to be able, it's going to give you protection for your transmission for those of you guys that have got uh, performance modifications done to the truck, tuning, uh, hard parts done to it, um, but this is a good this is a good cheap investment for you guys that are wanting to avoid having transmission problems. Now, uh, the normal working pressure for the 6R140 transmission is anywhere between 70 and 170 PSI. This solenoid, after it's installed, is going to raise your line pressure up. In some instances, on shift on shift strategies, it will raise line pressure up to over 300 PSI. So, let's go ahead and get started with our installation. All right, so we're getting ready to install our BD shift solenoid for our 6R140 Ford here. First thing that you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to unhook both batteries, both battery cables off of both batteries because we are working on an electronic portion of the transmission. Next, before I start draining the transmissions, I really, really like to take the dipstick out of the transmission, um, out of the tr out of the, the field tube at the engine where you check your transmission fluid. Sorry, I couldn't spit that out. It just lets the transmission flow, uh, the transmission fluid flow out of it quite a bit easier so it doesn't airlock on you. So 13 metric, we're gonna go ahead and start draining this, draining this baby. There is a drain plug on the uh, diesels here which makes it really, really nice. But even with a drain plug on the pan, it's an automatic transmission. Those of you all that have any experience with an automatic transmission know that no matter what you do and no matter how careful you are, you're gonna wind up wearing some automatic transmission fluid today. All right, you can see by the color of that fluid that that, uh, that needed to be changed anyway. So we're gonna let that drain real good. Take your time with this, let it drain really, really good. That decreases your chance of having to wear a little bit more automatic transmission fluid. So we're gonna let this drain really good here. All right, we're almost done draining got just a little bit left in there so we're gonna go ahead and pull the pan now um, I think I've showed you all this in a video before uh, we've got a garbage can lid that we took and cut a bunch of holes in so what we do is we put that on our uh, drain our little drain cart here and uh, that just gives our just gives us a much wider area to catch this fluid when it falls out of here because it's going to the transmission is naturally slope backwards of course and uh, what will happen is when you pull these pan bolts you're still going to have quite a bit of fluid inside the pan so what we're going to do is we're just going to put our drain plug back in for now i'm just going to snug it up there before i pull the pan i like to go through here and i like to knock off all the loose dirt uh, i just like to do it because this is one more thing uh, one less thing i've got to clean out of the pan so eight metrics, we're gonna go ahead and go through here and start zipping these out. You wanna leave a couple on, I like to leave the sides because that's easiest for me, but everything other than the sides, we'll go ahead and pull them out. There's 19 bolts holding the transmission pan on on one of these Fords, one of these Fords, so eight metrics, pull them on out. The back three bolts, you'll wanna use something or an eight metrics on a swivel to get to them. Pro 
tip here. Go ahead and move your pan backwards because all your fluid is going to be at the back of that pan when you go to loosen it up. All right. Very carefully, what I'm going to do is the two eight metrics that are left in here, I'm going to just loosen them is what I'm going to do. All right, see, I'm starting to get some drip at the back of this already. I'll kind of take a little bit of that out. That's what the cool thing about my garbage can lid is I will catch that as it runs off. Okay, I'm going to loosen those down just a little bit more. Let's see, I'm going to get more fluid. And our garbage can lid catches it pretty safely. And what that gives me the ability to do is really got a free hand to go after the next bolt. that drain you'll see still gonna be a ton of fluid comes out of there so that's gonna drain even more and we're gonna let it do just that I'm gonna drop the rest of that pan in there we're gonna let that drop drain even more I want to make sure that we get as much of that old fluid out of there as we can you can tell by the color of it, it's, uh, it needed to be changed. So, again, more of the waiting game. Let her drain. I want to go ahead and remove the old filter now to keep our transmission draining the way we want to and try to get this old fluid out of it. There's three eight metric bolts on this, one on either side here and here, and then one right there. And look at that. I had my hand up there for a split second. I already got a big old drop of it on there. So we'll just loosen that. Loosen this bolt. I'm going to go ahead and pull this bolt here. Just get a bunch of fluid to come out of there. With the other two, what I'll do, I will go ahead and pull one side. Like I said again, you're going to get a bunch of fluid that's going to come out of here, even at this pace. All right. The two short bolts are on the sides of this, long bolt to the back. The actual inside of this filter, the, the uh, fluid in on the filter, or fluid out on the filter, I should say, um, has got a gasket on it, a ring on it, inside of the bore going into the valve body. It'll hold the filter pretty well. So, let's get. shorts there. I'll go ahead and start working this down out of that bore. And that bore is towards the front of the filter and I'll show you that once I get it down here. But you can see the filter, quite a bit of fluid comes out of there. You can't see inside the shot. I forgot that we had zoomed in there so I, if my my friendly assistant animal zoom out just a little bit for me so we can look here. 
so this is the portion of the filter that is inside the transmission two things here number one you're going to want to make sure that the o-ring that is on this filter came out with it and it didn't get caught inside of that bore right there and two the filter is going to have a ton of oil in it so make sure you watch what you're doing there don't get it all over you now a little bit more of the same we're just going to kind of let this drain on its own i don't like to get around the valve bodies with uh, too much with rag i'll take a something that doesn't have lint to it and i'll I'll just blotch around it, try to pick up some of the loose fluid, save a little bit of the mess, but uh, I'll let it sit here and kind of do its thing. I like to clean inside of that bore for the filter too. Make sure it's clean again, and there's not another seal in there that I missed, or a seal came from the old filter, but yeah, just trying to keep everything clean here and uh, getting ready to go for our solenoid. We are ready to go after the solenoid now. Um, so I've got my filter down, kind of go around here. Look at that. I love automatic transmission. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go after the solenoid itself. So the solenoid that we're working for, that we're working on, is gonna be the second one from the left or second one from the driver's side. So this is the solenoid that we're gonna remove. You can kind of look through here and see, we're gonna have to disconnect all of the electrical harnesses for every solenoid. We're gonna disconnect all of those. And then there is a retainer plate that's in there held on by seven screws. Now. If you're reading your directions from your BD on your BD kit, it tells you to use a T25 for these screws. That is incorrect. These screws are actually T27. So you will need a Torx 27 or T27 bit to get the uh, screws that hold the plate in it. So you wanna make sure that you get yourself a T27 Torx bit uh, screw and you're good to go there that'll help you to get those down. So, all right, let's go ahead and go with this. These things hold a lot of fluid, so you're gonna get a nice automatic transmission bath. You wanna make sure that you just kinda keep, there's no real way to get the, uh, get the electrical connectors in the wrong position there, I guess. Well, I say that there's no way that you could, but I guess there's, you could, but I don't, I don't know how you'd do it. But anyway, just go ahead and disconnect them. Don't worry about it. You've got to do them all because it gives you access to the plate screws. So be real, be real gentle with those. Try to pull them down as easy as you can. If you can, try to go after those. Um, just try to pull straight down on them there. All right, so now you see that gives us access to these T27s here. So we're gonna go for those. I'm gonna go ahead and just start in the middle. And work my way out. Once you've loosened those T27s up, just go ahead and remove them. Once you have your seven Torx bolts out, it's time to go ahead and take this plate down. This plate, you just simply pull it straight down and it will unlock from underneath of the solenoids there. And don't drop it in your pan like an idiot. My God dang near just did. Think clean here too. You wanna try to get something to lay this on to where it's not laying in dirt or anything of that nature. So we'll go ahead and do that. Try not to even look at the other solenoids because you don't want to dislodge them. We're only going after one solenoid. Again, like I said, we're going after the second one from the driver's side here. So let's go ahead and work it out. 
try not to do too much up and down on this because you don't want to mess something up in the bore there or anything. It's kind of a far-fetched thing, but just, just be careful. And pull your solenoid straight out. There'll be quite a bit of fluid that comes with it. Again, likes to drink that fluid. There we go. That's the solenoid we're going for. I realized one thing that I haven't done for you is talk to you about exactly what this solenoid does. So the second solenoid from driver's side on the trans on the 6R140 transmission is the line pressure control solenoid. The BD unit is capable of producing up to 325 PSI of line pressure. So this is a very, very robust solenoid. You can look at the stock solenoid. The stock solenoid has got a stamped steel case on it. Uh, the BD solenoid, this is a piece of machined aluminum. Very, very nice unit. Actually, that's gonna come into focus right there for us. Nice unit, uh, machined aluminum. Really, really good solenoid. So the upgraded pressures that you're gonna have, you're not gonna have flexing or deflection in the case of this solenoid. It can cause you problems. This is a really, really nice unit. So let's go ahead with our installation here. I'll just grab some uh, little bit of transmission fluid from the, uh, from the transmission here. And you're gonna wanna check before you install this, one thing that I always look for here is I wanna always check my screens for debris. Um, wanna make sure that you check these screens around here, around the solenoid here, check them for debris. And just look at the solenoid itself for debris. Even though we use, try to use lint-free towels around here for something, we just wanna make sure that you don't get a piece of lint or something inside of here, so. Um, you're probably gonna have transmission fluid all over your hands, so you'll be able to get plenty of lubricant on the O-ring. So let's go ahead with the install here. Uh, make sure that your bore is nice and clean. I don't suggest, again, that's another one of those things. I don't suggest going in there with a rag, just kind of visually inspect it, make sure something didn't get in there. You should be good to go. All right, now we're just gonna go ahead. Now, the new solenoid has not been compressed yet, so it's gonna take more pressure to get it in into the uh, into the valve body or the main control uh, unit, I think is what Ford calls this, but into the valve body there. So it's gonna take more pressure, so just be careful, take your time. It is, again, it's gonna take a little bit more pressure. You wanna be conscious of what you're doing around the end of it, around the electrical connector. Try not to put too much pressure on that electrical end of it. And there you go. There we go. All right. So I'm going to, when I turn that, once I get it in, you hear it click. When I turn that, I want to make sure that I turn that by the body. Try not to turn it by the electrical connector there. Turn it by the body. So what I did to get that in there is I just turned that around to the side to where I was pushing on this portion of it so I could stay away from that electrical portion. So there you go. We got ourselves a really nice BD solenoid in here and she is ready to go. All right. So we'll go ahead and put our little retaining plate back in there in the same orientation that it came out of the truck. And remember, clean is the word here. We want to try to be as clean as we possibly can. Clean that uh, plate, clean up around the valve body here. And then go ahead and install this retaining plate. Take your time with that, only one way it can go. Now we're going to reinstall our bolts. Don't take for granted that they're clean. Wipe them off as you go. All right, I went through and just hand tightened these, all these down, the T27 uh, bolts. Now a good valve body builder will build a valve body and 
never even pick up a torque wrench the first time, but guess what? I'm not a good valve body builder. I'm very conscious of torques around valve bodies. Why? Because if you over torque something or you under torque something in a valve body or, or a hydraulic control unit, what you can get is you can get cross leaking, you can get passages that are sealed off to where they don't have any fluid transfer whatsoever. So even though this is just the retaining plate, I went in, looked the, I looked up the torque spec on this retaining plate. So because I want to make sure that I use the proper torque, proper sequence for this to make sure that I don't screw something up on this valve body. So this is 97 inch pounds on here. Here in Kentucky, uh, no, I can't count to 97, so Adam's probably gonna have to set this torque wrench up for me, but I'll wing it just a little bit to 97. But the good thing about it is, is the next torque that you're gonna need for your internal filter is also a 97 inch pounds. So here we are at 90, there's 97. Let's take her till she clicks. Start in the center and then just work your way out just like a head bolt. There they are, tight torque down. All right, I'm gonna go back. I'm just gonna put my electrical connectors back on each solenoid. Our new BD solenoid there. I'm trying to get to where you guys can see. Can you see, Adam? Okay. All right, all seven solenoids are pushed in. There is a push pin in the center of this wiring harness, but it does not have a place to go. So what I do is I just flip it up there. That's the way it came down. So, all right. Now we are ready for the filter. Time to install our new internal filter. Woo! We got a new internal filter here. So before you get started, you want to make sure that you lubricate this O-ring, the O-ring for the filter, and you want to just check your bore. Just check that bore where that O-ring is going to be going. Make sure there's nothing in there. And we're going to go ahead and insert it into the control body here. Control body. All right, and then we want to get our bolts. Remember, our two shorter bolts go on the sides. And then our longer bolt is going to, there, yeah, short bolt there. And then our longer bolt is going to go to the back, just like so. Then we want to tighten these down, and these are, these have a torque value. We so want to torque these to 97 inch pounds and I hope I said that on these back bolts these back bolts the T27 torques I hope I didn't say foot pounds they are 97 inch pounds again that's 97 inch pounds and that's exactly what our filter retaining bolts are they are 97 inch pounds as well and we will tighten those up in a crisscross pattern as best you can crisscross with three do that
8 metric. So I'll take these to 97 inch pounds. So all three of those are 97 inch pounds. So that's got our filter installed. So now we're just about ready to put our pan up. And I wanna talk on that for just a second here. All right, what I wanna talk about now is the pan gasket. So the pan gasket on the 6R140s, this is actually a reusable gasket. I don't take the gasket down. You can, if you wanna take the gasket down and clean everything up, that's perfectly fine. I don't do that. I don't wanna disturb it. It's not leaking. It's not having any problems. It's a reusable gasket. I'm gonna leave it exactly right there where it lives. But what I do do is I go over it very, very good and I clean everything really, really well. I wanna make sure that everything that's touching the ceiling surface on the pan, on the pan itself, I wanna make sure that it's good and good and clean. So I'll go through and I'll really clean everything up there good, make sure there's no dirt, no dust. If you're on a dirty truck kind of like this one, there was a little piece of rubber right there, make sure that I get that out. But I just don't take that gasket down, I leave it right there, it's not leaking, it's in good shape. I just make sure that it's really, really clean before I go back with my pan. All right, time to clean our pan up before we go back in with it on the transmission. Okay, first thing that you're gonna wanna do before you get into your heavy cleaning, you're gonna wanna get the magnet off. So go ahead and just grab that magnet, roll it off there. You wanna check it for debris. You wanna check it for large chunks of metal, things of that nature. If you've got any large chunks in it, you wanna make sure that you get those off. That, uh, that magnet was pretty dirty. You can see everything that came off that magnet. But honestly, for the way the fluid looked, I expected there to be maybe some more debris on there, but no debris, we're in good shape. So we're going to a little bit of brake clean here, just a little bit. Clean that magnet up real good. Then we'll set it aside. Then it's time to do the pan. So I'll take my pan here and I'll try to wipe up any residual that's in it. But if you pick it up off the magnet, it makes it an even bigger mess, just like you saw right there for us. I'll get most of my residual out of there. Then I want to do my sides. My sides, this is your ceiling surface right here that's very, very clean already. If you didn't have a transmission leak. So what I like to do. I'll take a good, a good gasket scraper here. Try not to gouge this. I say again, try not to gouge this. And I'll lightly go across this pan. All right. I'll lightly go across this pan. That just gets the big stuff off of there. And the reason why I want to get the big stuff off there is because when you're going back with the pan, it never fails. You're not going to be exactly in line with your ceiling surface. So what I like to do is try to get my big stuff off of there. And that's just that much less of a chance of having a contaminant, a piece of dirt, anything that hits the ceiling surface of the gasket. So that's the way I attack it. Now, not that one, but we're ready to go for brake clean here. Clean this up. I'm working with new towels here. I'll wipe that down. Wipe everything down around the outside of the pan. 
Try to just get it clean. Okay. Now we're going to put our magnet back in. So once more, work it over real good with a clean cloth. Get all the contaminants off of it. Then make sure that you put your magnet back on your pan. Very important that you do this, because if you do not do this, you are going to be kicking yourself later and yes, if you put this back together and you think to yourself, oh, I forgot the magnet. Do I have to pull this back down and put the magnet in there? Uh, yes, uh, hell yes, you do. If you don't, this is going to be a bad deal for your new fluid that you spend 100 bucks to put in here. So get the magnet cleaned up real good, put it back on there. So there we go. Clean pan, ready to go back in the truck. We've got our pan good and clean now, so just give her a real nice once over there. What I like to do is I just like to grab two bolts. All right, put my pan up here, and I'm looking up. Oh, one more check here. Did I get all my solenoids hooked up? Did I get all my thing? I got my filter on it. Yeah, I'm good to go. All right, go straight up with some fan. Oh, wow. Mom, put a bolt in there. <laughs> so we're gonna put our next bolt in. And there we go, boys. We got two bolts hung. We can take our uh, oil, our oil thing out of here. <clears throat> Try not to turn it over. It's <clears throat> out. All right. Now, we're gonna go through and we're going to put all of our pan bolts in. They're all the same size, they're all the same length. No big deal there, so don't need anything here but just to get them back into the transmission. Now, what is the torque spec? The torque spec on these is 80 inch pounds. It is 80 inch pounds. And you want to make sure that you're not getting any contaminants in there. So we're just going to go through here. And we're going to put all, is it 19 bolts, I think? Is that right? 19, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, 19. We're going to put all 19 bolts back in. And then we we're going to torque them to 80 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern. There's 19, sorry, 19 bolts. Just had to double check my work here. Again, 80 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern. We'll get these pulled up here. Here we go with our 80 inch pounds in a crisscross pattern. Adam tells me I need to talk, but it's hard to talk when you're when you concentrate. I can't concentrate and talk at the same time. But I was setting up my <laughs> I was setting up my torque ratchet there. 
Sorry, kids. All right. Eighty inch pounds, and I'm just going to go in a crisscross pattern. Give everybody a, a once over here. Took them all off again. That's it. Now, we just want to go ahead and tighten up our uh, drain plug. The drain plug's got a torque spec to it, but I, uh, I'll be honest with you, I forgot it. So we're just gonna make sure that we get it tight. I think it's 97 inch pounds as well. So we're gonna go ahead and fill with transmission fluid. You wanna make sure that you use correct transmission fluid for your truck all the time whenever you do something like this. This is Mercon uh, low viscosity that the 6R140 takes in this year truck. So we're gonna go ahead and fill here. Um, for this year truck, 2012, we're gonna start with eight quarts. I'm gonna put eight quarts in it. Then we're gonna shift through all the gears, make sure everything engages. We don't have any check engine lights or anything of that nature. And then we will recheck it cold to see what the fluid level is. So what we're doing is when you fill the, the uh, fill the trans up, eight quarts on this transmission again, what you want to do first off, start your truck, make sure you don't have any check engine lights. If you've got any check engine lights, as soon as you start the truck, once you've done the solenoid, you know you've got something electrically wrong, all bets are off at that point, shut the truck off, pull the pan back off of it, see what you've, you've let loose. That's the first thing. Next, no check engine lights, everything looks good. What you want to do is you want to cycle through the gears. So go into reverse, feel like it's pulling in reverse. Go to neutral, does it feel like it turns loose? Let's go. Drive, does it want to pull itself forward? So you cycle through all the gears first, down into manual, drive, neutral, reverse, and go back to park. You go back to park, that's uh, that's good. You may when you first do this a couple times, you may hear some clicking in park. That's just the line pressure. Everything will subside. Everything's good there. Another thing with this solenoid, you may hear a little bit of pump noise from the transmission. That should be perfectly normal. BD tells you in their instructions a little bit of pump whine from this is okay too. But if you don't like it, uh, shut the truck off, pull it out, put your stock valve back in it. You should be good to go. So I'm just gonna cycle through the gears a couple times here. Just want to make sure that I cycle through everything. And we've got, uh, you don't want to go through the gears too fast there. I went through the gears just a little bit too fast. So you want to go into reverse, neutral, into drive, into my other two. And locking into neutral, reverse, up into park. We're good to go there. So now I'm gonna jump out, I'm gonna check my fluid. You wanna leave the truck running in park. Make sure that we don't have any external leaks. Good to go. We we'll wanna pull our dipstick. Try to take a look at this here. Now, the dipsticks on the Fords are, can be tricky to read. So eight quarts should put you on your cold mark on the dipstick down to here. This is this is your cool your cold into the checker marks here. This is your hot portion of that in the cold. We should be right down in there, maybe just a little bit into the hot side, but we're gonna be good. 
And your fluid levels are going to show a couple of different on either side of the dipstick. They're going to, or on the either side of the end, the plastic portion of this. You always want to make sure that you go with uh, the low side. Don't 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 go with the high side of it. You want to go with the low side. So you can see that's what I was talking about. Look at this on this side of the stick. It looks like it's all the way up here. But look on this side of the stick right there. The fluid level is right there. So that's a perfect example of that, of what we were looking for. So we know from the way that looks right there, we're probably maybe about a half a quart low. So we'll do it again here. Yeah, I'm gonna say about a half a quart low right there. So we're on the stick, which is a good thing, so we know what kind of what our target is. So I'm gonna fill it, put a little bit more fluid in it, and, and uh, get it onto my cold mark, and then I'm gonna take it out and drive it. When you drive it, again, you just wanna make sure that you've got good shifts. First off, you want to make sure that you don't have any beating and banging. Uh, just look for the obvious stuff, external leaks or anything like that. So we're going to put a little bit more fluid in this. When we come back, we're going to take you out on a test drive. We're going to show you the, the uh, we're going to show you what uh, line pressure the transmission is making now. All right, our BD6R140 pressure enhancing solenoid worked well for this truck. In closing, what you want to do is you want to make sure first off that you get your fluid level correct in the, correct in the truck. Uh, I started out with eight quarts. You may have to use a little bit more than that for your truck, just depending on how much you let the truck drain. Uh, but once you get it to the correct level on the stick, check it with the truck running and in park. Uh, after you've run the truck and get it up to operating temperature on the transmission, if it makes it into the hash mark on the dipstick like we showed you, you're in good shape on your fluid level. So that really concludes our installation. Um, who do I suggest this pressure enhancing solenoid for? Obviously, if you've got perform performance modifications done to your truck, it's going to be a great addition for your truck. It'll work on a stock truck as well, help to pr protect your transmission. I didn't notice any heat uh, gains in the transmission from this. That was one of my concerns going into this. I thought, well, this is gonna raise, raise transmission temperature a little bit. It didn't. I, we've got a stock pan on this truck, so it's stock capacity on fluid level. I didn't see any gains in the heat. Uh, you know, normally running around, just normal shifts on the truck. The truck would be 200 plus PSI on the shifts. So, uh, well, that's that's up quite a bit from what your normal, your normal shifting pressures are. So, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel. Like and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions about this installation or any of our other installations, please give us a call. Thank you.